I'm totally having a hot flash. I'm not kidding. I'm back in the guest bedroom again. It's such a crappy day out. I can't even deal. Okay, so today's video is about why I am not interested in talking about the female athlete triad. Before you think I'm crazy, hear me out for a second. We all know what the female athlete triad is about. It is about rounding up three symptoms and making a call on someone's health by virtue of those three symptoms. So we're talking about not eating enough, amenorrhea, osteoporosis. Those three things together are supposed to give us an indication of what we're suffering from. This girl has stopped getting her period. She's probably not eating enough to cover her caloric expenditure and she has veered toward osteopenia and maybe even toward osteoporosis. This is a super important diagnosis and one that should not be ignored. This is something that should let the athlete and her coaches know that she needs to take a step back. She needs to monitor her nutrition and should be on a much lower level of activity in order to regain her period. Bone density is key here. You certainly don't want to be an older woman and have problems with your bones. You definitely don't want to be a younger woman and have the bone problems of an older woman. Also, I don't need to tell you how difficult the loss of fertility can be, especially if you eventually would like to try to conceive. What is the problem with the female athlete triad? It's that the definition is too narrow. If you are expected to not get a period and have osteoporosis while you're an athlete in order to design your recovery plan, that's kind of a lot to look for. What I mean to say is, you might be a person who lost your period, you don't eat enough, but you're not even close to osteoporosis or osteopenia. So what does that mean? You don't have the female athlete triad and you don't have to pull back on your training? No. You've heard me talk about red S before, relative energy deficiency in sport. And this is something that has been pioneered by Dr. Margot Mountjoy. I'm gonna link information for her and information for red S down below. The reason why I am now focusing 100% of my efforts on relative energy deficiency in sport is because it is much more inclusive. Red S, frankly, has more symptoms associated with it, some of which are a decrease in glucose utilization, that means you have issues with blood sugar, mobilization of fat stores, which means that you start to notice a little bit of weight gain even though you're an endurance athlete, slow metabolism, which can often look like a thyroid issue, a decrease in growth hormone, which means that you are going to have a really hard time recovering from your efforts. You're gonna have GI issues like constipation or diarrhea, anemia, fatigue, problems with having enough energy, depression, hair loss, mood swings, oh yeah, and electrolyte disturbances too. If you're an athlete and you are suffering from a few of these, it's much easier for you to get yourself diagnosed. Because Red S has more symptoms, it's more inclusive. You don't have to be all the way to osteopenia to realize that you need to take a break. The other important part of this increased inclusivity is that you can be suffering from a bunch of these things and have what is considered a normal BMI or a normal body fat percentage. Amenorrhea doesn't just happen to skinny chicks, okay? Not at all. If we just keep ourselves focused on that tiny population for whom the female athlete triad rings true, we miss out the opportunity to talk about this and help more athletes. So you're gonna see me talk a lot about Red S. You're gonna see me talk a lot about this instead of the female athlete triad. It's not that I don't think the female athlete triad is important, I do. I just think that relative energy deficiency in sport, it's a way of including more women in a diagnosis. Basically, the more women we have that can identify with the problem, the more women we have really taking strides to take care of their fertility, get their period back, get healthy, and you know what? Probably perform better. Of course, the remedy for red S is to make sure that you do not have an energy deficiency. So what does that mean? We know it means you have to eat. It means you have to eat to cover your caloric expenditure. And that's the way back to health. I know it sounds easier than it actually is. And that's why I'm here. If you didn't catch my last video, I just want to remind you that now we have a website. There is a caseofthegills.com where you can go and find all of the videos that I have done all in one place. You can also find some of the blog posts that I'm doing, I'm sharing some of your emails, I'm talking about some other good stuff on there, so you can find that on acaseofthegills.com. I also have a Facebook page for us, and you can find that at Facebook. Go ahead and find me at Case of the Jills and like the page. Subscribe here, follow me on Instagram, send me an email. Let's keep the conversation going, because the more we share, the stronger we get. Thanks for watching.